I get a kick out of giving the next award because I got it once. Uh, it's the Alfred Linda Smith Award for Scholarship. We have a rule, by the way, that anybody can nominate somebody for award, and the DPA staff play a key role in selecting, but DPA staff and board members cannot be selected. So there are some incredibly worthy people on our board staff, but there are some who got it before they joined the board or, af or afterward. Uh, in this case, I'm going to, um, well, actually, there's one other thing I wanted to say before I, one of the recipients of this award uh, passed away a few months ago. And I just want to say, you know, a lot of us here knew and respected and loved and miss Mike Gray. You know, I mean, Mike, you know, I, I remember when that award was given and there was this debate, should it be the Brecker Award or the Linda Smith Award? Because in a way he was almost more in the tradition of Ed Brecker. He was a journalist, a writer, who wrote this sort of breakthrough book. I mean, Drug Crazy, in its own way, it may not have done what Michelle Alexander's, you know, New Jim Crow or the Eugene Jarecki film did, but his book, The New Jim Crow, that came out 10, 15 years ago, was an eye-opener for an incredible number of people. And just like Michelle and the others, he didn't say, there's my book, I'm going on the next thing. He went back and committed much of the rest of his life to this cause, working with Common Sense for Drug Policy, doing incredible work, continuing to write, interview, be creative, always believing that we were just that close to the tipping point. So I just want to say, for me and a lot of others, we miss you, Mike. You really made a fantastic contribution. I, I'm glad we had a chance to recognize you when you were around. So, this award is going to be given by my colleague and partner, Marsha Rosenbaum, to the remarkable Paul Armentano at Normal. It is such a pleasure to be able to present this award to Paul Armentano, who is deputy director at another organization I love, which is Normal. Paul, thank you for recognizing Normal. Paul regularly speaks to surprising groups of academics, and he speaks to other scholarly groups um, who don't know much about marijuana, but by the time Paul Armentano is finished with them, they know about marijuana. He's also the author of 750 publications, including he's co-author of the most recent one, I think, or at least 2008, um, Marijuana is Safer. But uh, all, all of these kind of points on his resume don't really capture the scholarship and the generosity of Paul Armentano. Paul, Paul is a virtual encyclopedia about marijuana. And whenever I or some of my colleagues, one mentioned to me earlier, another Linda Smith Award winner, Craig Reinerman, says, so when we have a question about marijuana, this is what we say to each other, call Paul. <laughs> so it is my great pleasure to present the Linda Smith Award, appropriately to Paul Armentano. Thank you, Marsha. You know, I never realized the lights were so bright when you're standing up here. I'm really, I'm flattered. I was flattered just to be nominated for this award, much less to receive it. Uh, when one looks at the 
past recipients of this award, it's really easy to be humbled when you see names like the late Lynn Zimmer, who co-wrote just one of the most fantastic books on this issue, Marijuana Myths, Marijuana Facts. Uh, Lester Greenspoon has won this award. Thomas Zaz won this award early on, and that was actually a very important person to me. Uh, he wrote a book in 1992, it was published, called Our Right to Drugs. And my father, who had a lot of shaped a lot of my views. He taught me a very important lesson when I was very young. He taught me to question, and specifically he taught me to question those institutions that were often taught as a society not to question, like the state, like law enforcement. And Thomas Zaz wrote this book called Our Right to Drugs and I was 20 years old and my father gave me that book. He said, you ought to read this. You ought to think about it. And I did. I've been thinking about it ever since. <laughs> So I'd like to thank Ethan, Marsha, the staff at DPA for this award. I'd like to thank my boss so many of these years, Alan St. Pierre, for in many ways giving me the autonomy and the freedom to branch out and take on many of the projects and do many of the things that I've done and in many ways gave me the confidence and said, here, go ahead. Even though this is uncharted territory, maybe for us, maybe for drug law reformers, go ahead, you can do it. I always, I appreciated that, I respected that. And I got into this issue with a single motivating factor. It was about social justice. That was almost 20 years ago. It was at a time when it was almost inconceivable to even think we'd be where we are now. And things like talking about marijuana industries, marijuana creating jobs, tax revenue, they weren't even something that we would consider at that time. They weren't anything I considered at that time. They weren't a motivating factor. And frankly, while it's great we've made the strides we've made so we can have those conversations, Things like jobs and tax revenue or potential tax revenue or reprioritizing police resources, they're not my motivation now either. My motivation when I got into this was I was sick and tired of seeing good people's lives ruined because of their use or possession or cultivation of a benevolent plant. And that's still my motivation. And we, don't, we can't lose focus of the fact that that should be our overriding motivation. And I'll end with this. When I think about the work I've done and why I continue to do the work I do, I'm going to quote a line from Carl Hart's excellent book where he says, those who know cannot not know. And I think I speak for myself and everybody in this room when I say we know and therefore we have an obligation because we know to educate those who don't know. Thank you.